Hello, dear friend. I want to take a moment to thank you for being here today. It's no coincidence that you found your way to this message. Life has a way of bringing us face to face with challenges that seem insurmountable. In these moments, it's easy to feel lost, overwhelmed, and even question where God is in the midst of it all. But let me assure you, God is not distant. He is right here, in the thick of your struggles, ready to guide you, comfort you, and most importantly, strengthen your faith. Today, we'll dive deep into the scriptures to discover how we can trust God in difficult times, using powerful examples from the Bible to illuminate our path. Part 1. The Foundation of Trust Trusting God isn't always easy, especially when life throws its hardest punches. We all face moments when the ground beneath us seems to crumble and the path forward is obscured by darkness. These are the times when our faith is truly tested, when the easy answers fall short and the comfort of certainty is nowhere to be found. Yet, it is precisely in these moments that our trust in God becomes most crucial. Trust isn't just a passive feeling, it's an active, deliberate choice, a choice to believe in God's goodness even when our circumstances scream otherwise. Trust is the bedrock of our relationship with God. Without it, our faith is like a house built on sand, vulnerable to the storms of life. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 gives us a powerful reminder, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. This isn't a call to trust God in some things, or when it's easy, or when it makes sense to us. It's a call to trust Him in everything, with our whole heart, without reservation. This verse challenges us to let go of our own understanding, our need to control, our desire to see the full picture. It invites us to a place of surrender where we submit every part of our lives to God, our decisions, our fears, our hopes, and our dreams. In return, God promises to make our paths straight. This doesn't mean life will be free of obstacles, but that God will lead us through them, guiding us on the right path, even when we can't see it. To understand what this kind of trust looks like in action, let's consider the story of Abraham, one of the most profound examples of faith in the Bible. God asked Abraham to leave everything familiar, his home, his country, his family, and go to a land that he would show him, Genesis 12 verses 1 to 4. This was no small request. Abraham was asked to step into the unknown, to embark on a journey without a roadmap, without a clear destination, and without any human assurance of success. Imagine the uncertainty Abraham must have felt. He had no GPS, no detailed itinerary, no concrete plan. All he had was God's word, a promise that if he obeyed, God would bless him and make him a great nation. Abraham's decision to obey wasn't based on logic or guarantees, it was based on trust. He believed that God's plan was far better than anything he could imagine, even though he couldn't see how it would unfold. Abraham's trust in God was not a one-time act but a continuous choice. Throughout his journey, Abraham faced numerous challenges, famines, conflicts, and the heart-wrenching command to sacrifice his son Isaac. Yet, in each situation, he chose to trust God. His life reminds us that trust is often tested, but it is in those tests that our faith grows deeper and stronger. Are you in a place where you feel uncertain about the future? Perhaps you're standing at a crossroads, unsure of which path to take, or maybe the path before you is full of twists and turns that you didn't expect. In these moments, it's natural to feel anxious or overwhelmed. But remember Abraham. Trust that God is guiding you even when you don't have all the answers. The journey may be unknown to you, but it is known to God. God sees the end from the beginning. He knows every step of your journey, every obstacle, every detour, and every blessing. When you trust Him, you're placing your life in the hands of the one who loves you more than you can comprehend, who has plans for your welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. 
Trusting God doesn't mean you'll always understand what he's doing, but it does mean you can rest in the assurance that he is good, he is faithful, and he is in control. So, as you face the uncertainties of life, take a step of faith. Trust God with your future, with your dreams, with your fears. Surrender your need to know every detail and lean into the truth that God is with you, guiding you and preparing the way before you. Like Abraham, you may not see the full picture now, but trust that God's plan is unfolding in your life step by step. Even when the way forward seems unclear or when the path is difficult, God is leading you towards something greater than you can imagine. Abraham's story encourages us to take the first step even when we can't see the whole staircase. Trust isn't about having all the answers, it's about trusting the one who does. As you continue your journey, remember that the God who called Abraham is the same God who is with you now. He has seen every moment of your life and he holds your future in his hands. When life is uncertain and the way forward seems daunting, lean into God's promises. Trust that he is with you, that he is guiding you, and that his plans for you are good. Even when you don't understand, even when the path is difficult, know that God is faithful. He will lead you through the unknown just as he led Abraham. Trust in his love, trust in his wisdom, and trust that he is always working for your good. Part 2. Trusting God in Impossible Situations Life has a way of confronting us with challenges that seem insurmountable. Sometimes, we find ourselves in situations where every avenue appears blocked, every solution exhausted, and hope seems distant. These are the moments when trusting God is not just a choice but a necessity, a lifeline that anchors us in the midst of our most daunting trials. The Bible is full of stories where God steps into seemingly impossible situations and makes a way where there was no way. One of the most powerful examples is the story of the Israelites at the Red Sea. After escaping from Egypt, the Israelites found themselves in a perilous position. Pharaoh's army was pursuing them from behind, and in front of them stretched the vast, impassable Red Sea, Exodus 14. The people were terrified, feeling trapped and hopeless. They cried out to Moses, filled with fear and doubt, questioning why they had been brought out of Egypt only to die in the desert. But Moses, standing firm in his trust in God, spoke words of faith and assurance, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today, Exodus 14 verse 13. Moses didn't know exactly how God would deliver them, but he trusted that God would. And God did the unimaginable, he parted the Red Sea, creating dry land for the Israelites to cross safely to the other side. The very sea that seemed to be an obstacle became the pathway to their deliverance. This miraculous event is more than just a story, it's a powerful reminder that God is able to do what we think is impossible. When the Israelites were cornered with no human way out, God made a way. The Red Sea represents those moments in our lives when we face overwhelming challenges, challenges that seem to have no solution. Whether it's a financial crisis that leaves us feeling buried under debt, a health issue that defies medical solutions, or a relationship that feels beyond repair, we all encounter our own Red Seas. In those moments, it's easy to feel afraid, discouraged, and even defeated. The enemy of our souls wants us to believe that there's no way out, that our situation is hopeless. But just as God was with the Israelites, He is with us. He hasn't changed. The same God who parted the Red Sea is the same God who walks with you today. He is not limited by your circumstances and He is not confined by the obstacles you face. Trusting God in impossible situations means believing that He can make a way where there seems to be no way. It means standing firm in faith even when you can't see the solution. It means knowing that God specializes in turning the impossible into the possible. Jesus himself said, what is impossible with man is possible with God, Luke 18 verse 27. There is no situation too difficult, no problem too complex, then no challenge too great for God. But trusting God in these moments also requires patience and perseverance. The Israelites had to take a step of faith and walk through the Red Sea. 
They didn't just stand on the shore waiting, they moved forward in obedience, trusting that God would hold the waters back until they reached the other side. Similarly, we are called to take steps of faith to keep moving forward even when the way seems unclear. God asks us to trust Him enough to walk through our Red Seas, believing that He will carry us safely to the other side. Are you facing an impossible situation today? Do you feel like you're standing at the edge of your own Red Sea with no way out? Remember that God is with you. He sees the full picture and He is working on your behalf even when you can't see it. Trust that He is able to do far more than you can ask or imagine, Ephesians 3 verse 20. Your situation may seem impossible, but with God nothing is impossible. God invites you to place your trust in Him, to let go of fear, and to stand firm in the assurance that He is in control. Like Moses, you can declare with confidence, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you. And as you do, watch how God moves in your life, making a way where there was no way, turning your impossibilities into testimonies of His power and faithfulness. Part 3. The Trials of Faith Life's most challenging moments often serve as the proving ground for our faith. Difficult times are more than just hardships, they are trials that test the depth and sincerity of our trust in God. It is in these moments of trial that our faith is either strengthened or weakened depending on how we respond. The Bible gives us a profound example of faith tested in the story of Job, a man whose life exemplifies unwavering trust in God despite unimaginable suffering. Job was a man who lived a righteous life. The Bible describes him as someone who feared God and shunned evil, Job 1 verse 1. He was blessed with immense wealth, a large family, and good health. But Job's faith was not tied to his prosperity, it was rooted in his deep reverence for God. And it was this faith that was put to the ultimate test. In a series of devastating events, Job lost everything, his wealth, his children, and his health. The trials that Job endured were not because of any wrongdoing on his part, but because God allowed his faith to be tested. Job's response to his suffering is one of the most remarkable displays of faith in the Bible. Despite the overwhelming grief and physical pain, Job did not turn away from God. Instead, he declared, though he slay me, yet will I hope in him, Job 13 verse 15. This statement is a powerful affirmation of Job's trust in God even when he could not understand why he was suffering. Job's faith was not contingent on his circumstances, it was anchored in his relationship with God. The story of Job teaches us that faith is not about having a trouble-free life. It's easy to trust God when everything is going well, but true faith is revealed in the midst of adversity. Faith is about clinging to God in the middle of our troubles, believing that He is good and that He is in control even when everything around us suggests otherwise. God allowed Job's faith to be tested, not to destroy him, but to refine him. The trials that Job faced were not random acts of cruelty, they were part of a divine process that deepened Job's understanding of God and strengthened his faith. Through his suffering, Job came to know God in a more profound way. In Job 42 verse 5, after God had spoken to him, Job said, My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. This revelation of God's character and presence was something that Job might not have fully grasped without going through his trials. In the end, God restored Job, blessing him with even more than he had before, Job 42 verse 10. This restoration was not just a return of material wealth, but a deepened faith and a more intimate relationship with God. Job's story assures us that our trials are not without purpose. They are not meant to break us, but to build us up, to draw us closer to God, and to refine our faith. If you are in the midst of a trial, know that it is not without purpose. God uses these moments to strengthen our faith, to teach us to rely on Him more fully, than to draw us closer to Him. Trials are opportunities for growth, even though they may be painful. James 1 verses 2-4 encourages us to consider it pure joy, 
my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Like Job, you can trust that God is with you even in the darkest of times. When you feel overwhelmed, when the pain seems too much to bear, remember that God is not absent. He is right there with you, walking through the fire by your side, refining your faith like gold in a furnace. And just as he did with Job, God will bring you through your trials stronger and more steadfast in your faith. So, when you face the trials of faith, hold on to God's promises. Know that He is working in your life even when you can't see it. Trust that He is using your trials to shape you, to mold you, and to draw you closer to Him. And when the storm passes, you will find that your faith has been strengthened, your understanding of God deepened, and your relationship with Him more intimate. God is faithful, and He will see you through. Part 4. Trusting in God's Timing one of the most challenging aspects of faith is trusting in God's timing. As humans, we are naturally inclined to want things to happen according to our own schedules. We set goals, make plans, and expect results within a certain time frame. But life rarely unfolds the way we anticipate, and often, we find ourselves waiting, sometimes for far longer than we expected. It is in these seasons of waiting that our faith is tested when we are called to trust that God's timing is not just different from ours, but perfect. The Bible is filled with stories of individuals who had to trust in God's timing, none more striking than the story of Joseph. Joseph's life was marked by a series of events that seemed to move him further and further away from the dreams God had placed in his heart. As a young man, Joseph received dreams from God that indicated he would one day hold a position of great authority even over his own family, Genesis 37 verses 5 to 11. But instead of moving toward that destiny, Joseph's life took a dramatic and painful turn. His own brothers, driven by jealousy, sold him into bondage. Joseph found himself in a foreign land stripped of his family, his freedom, and his dignity. Yet, even in bondage, Joseph remained faithful to God. He served his master Potiphar with integrity, and God blessed him. But just when it seemed things were looking up, Joseph was falsely accused of a crime he didn't commit and thrown into prison, Genesis 39. Once again, Joseph's circumstances seemed to contradict the dreams God had given him. Joseph spent years in prison, forgotten by those he had helped, and it must have seemed as though his life was on a detour from which there was no return. But during all those years of waiting, God was at work. He was preparing Joseph, refining his character, and positioning him for the fulfillment of his promises. At the right time, God's time, Joseph was brought out of prison and elevated to a position of immense power, becoming the second most powerful man in Egypt, Genesis 41 verses 39 to 41. When famine struck the region, Joseph's God-given wisdom and leadership not only saved Egypt but also his own family, the very brothers who had betrayed him. When he finally revealed himself to his brothers, Joseph could look back on all that had happened and say, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives, Genesis 50 verse 20. Joseph's journey teaches us that God's timing is often different from our own, but it is always perfect. Had Joseph's life progressed according to his expectations, he might never have been prepared to handle the responsibility that awaited him. The years of hardship, the seasons of waiting, and the trials he endured were all part of God's plan to mold him into the man he needed to be for the task God had set before him. When we are in the midst of waiting, it can be difficult to see how God is at work. We may feel like we are stuck in a season that has no end, or that the dreams God has placed in our hearts are moving further out of reach. But the story of Joseph reminds us that God's delays are not his denials. He is not indifferent to our struggles, nor is he unaware of our desires. Rather, he is actively at work, aligning circumstances, refining our character, and preparing us for the fulfillment of his promises. 
Trusting in God's timing requires patience and faith. It means letting go of our need to control and surrendering to God's perfect plan. Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9 reminds us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's perspective is infinitely greater than ours, and He sees the end from the beginning. What may seem like a delay or a detour to us is, in fact, God's perfect plan unfolding in His perfect time. If you find yourself in a season of waiting, remember that God is not late. He is not slow in keeping His promises, thus some understand slowness, 2 Peter 3 verse 9. He is working all things together for your good, Romans 8 verse 28, even when you cannot see it. Your waiting is not wasted. It is in these seasons that God is doing some of His most profound work in your life, preparing you, shaping you, and aligning everything according to His will. So, trust in God's timing. Rest in the knowledge that He is faithful and that He will fulfill His promises in His perfect time. Like Joseph, you may not understand the path you are on right now, but you can trust that God is leading you. And when the time is right, He will bring about His plans for your life in ways that will exceed your expectations and bring glory to His name. Part 5. The Peace of Trusting God In a world that is often filled with chaos, uncertainty, and turmoil, finding peace can seem like an impossible task. Yet, the Bible offers us a profound promise, when we trust in God, we can experience a peace that transcends all understanding, even in the midst of the most challenging circumstances. This peace is not the absence of trouble, but the presence of God in the midst of it. It is the calm assurance that, no matter what we face, God is in control, and He is working all things together for our good. Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7 gives us a beautiful formula for experiencing this divine peace. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. These verses remind us that the key to finding peace is not in our ability to control our circumstances, but in our willingness to surrender them to God. The Apostle Paul, who wrote these words, knew firsthand what it meant to face difficulties. His life was marked by incredible hardships, imprisonment, beatings, shipwrecks, and constant danger, 2 Corinthians 11 verses 23-28. Yet, despite all of this, Paul was able to write about peace with conviction because he had experienced it himself. The peace that Paul speaks of is not a fleeting emotion or a temporary relief from stress, or it is a deep, abiding sense of calm that comes from trusting in God's sovereignty and goodness. Paul's life teaches us that peace is not found in the absence of trouble but in the presence of God. No matter how dire the situation, Paul knew that God was with him, guiding him, and protecting him. This assurance allowed him to face even the most daunting challenges with a sense of peace that confounded those around him. It is the same peace that allowed Paul to sing hymns of praise while chained in a prison cell, Acts 16 verse 25, can the same peace that enabled him to encourage others to rejoice in the Lord always, Philippians 4 verse 4, even while he himself was in chains. This peace, the peace of trusting in God, is available to all of us. It is not reserved for the apostles or for those who lived in biblical times. It is a gift that God offers to each of His children, a peace that is rooted in the knowledge that He is in control and that He loves us with an everlasting love. When we trust God, we are not only acknowledging His sovereignty, but we are also inviting His peace to rule in our hearts. But how do we cultivate this peace in our own lives, especially when anxiety and fear threaten to overwhelm us? Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7 gives us practical steps. First, we are told not to be anxious about anything. This is easier said than done, but it begins with a conscious decision to shift our focus from our problems to God's promises. Instead of letting anxiety control us, we are called to bring every concern, every worry, every fear to God in prayer. 
Prayer is a powerful tool for combating anxiety because it redirects our thoughts and our trust to God. When we pray, we are acknowledging that we cannot handle life's challenges on our own and we are inviting God to step in and take control. But prayer is not just about asking God for help, it is also about giving thanks. Thanksgiving is an essential part of trusting God because it shifts our focus from what we lack to what we have. When we thank God, even in the midst of difficult circumstances, we are declaring our trust in His goodness and His faithfulness. And what is the result of this kind of trust-filled prayer? The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This peace is not something that we can manufacture on our own, it is a supernatural gift from God. It is a peace that doesn't make sense in the natural world, a peace that is present even when life is falling apart. It is the peace that comes from knowing that God is in control, that He is with us, and that He is working all things together for our good. Romans 8 verse 28 You can have that peace too. When you feel anxiety creeping in, remind yourself of God's faithfulness. Remember how He has brought you through difficult times before and trust that He will do it again. Pray, give thanks, and let His peace flood your heart. Trust that God is working behind the scenes, aligning circumstances, and preparing blessings that you cannot yet see. In moments of anxiety, when the future seems uncertain and the weight of your worries feels too heavy to bear, take a step back and remind yourself of who God is. He is your loving Father, your protector, your provider, and your peace. Trust that He is with you, that He cares for you, and that He is able to carry you through whatever challenges you face. Let go of the need to control and let God's peace take control. As you grow in your trust in God, you will find that His peace becomes an ever-present reality in your life. It will guard your heart from fear, it will protect your mind from doubt, and it will anchor your soul in the steadfast love of your Savior. This is the peace of trusting in God, a peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace that the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. Embrace this peace, let it fill your heart, and rest in the assurance that your life is in the hands of a God who loves you more than you can imagine. Part 6. The Encouragement for the Journey As we draw to a close, I want to offer you some encouragement for the journey ahead. Life is full of challenges, uncertainties, and difficult times that test our faith. But in the midst of these trials, we are called to trust in a God who is unchanging, unwavering, and unfailingly good. Trusting God during difficult times is not about having all the answers or being able to foresee every twist and turn that life may bring. It's about placing your confidence in who God is, His character, His promises, and His boundless love for you. When you face storms that seem overwhelming, remember the words of Isaiah 41 verse 10, where God himself speaks directly to you, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This verse is a powerful reminder that you are never alone. God's presence is with you in every situation, His strength is within you, and His righteous right hand is upholding you even when you feel like you're about to fall. Trusting God is about relying on this truth even when the world around you seems chaotic and uncertain. It's about knowing that God's character is consistent, He is always good, always loving, and always faithful. He doesn't change with circumstances, uh, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 verse 8. This means that the same God who parted the Red Sea for the Israelites, who delivered Daniel from the lion's den, and who walked with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, is the same God who is with you today. He is more than able to bring you through whatever you are facing. In moments of doubt, when fear tries to creep in, lean on God's promises. He has given us His word as a source of strength, hope, and assurance. In Isaiah 41 verse 10, God's promise is clear, I will strengthen you and help you. This is not a vague assurance, it is a specific promise from the Creator of the universe to you. He will give you the strength you need to endure, and He will help you in ways that you might not even expect. The journey of faith is not one that you have to walk alone. 
God is with you every step of the way. He sees your struggles, he hears your prayers, and he is working in your life even when you cannot see it. Trust that his plans for you are good and that he is using every situation, no matter how difficult, to shape you and to bring you closer to him. Remember the promise found in Hebrews 13 verse 5, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. These are not just comforting words, they are the unbreakable truth. God is with you always, in every high and low, in every triumph and trial. He will never abandon you, no matter what you face. His presence is your constant companion, and His love for you is eternal. As you continue on your journey, let these truths be your anchor. When the winds of life are strong, when the waves threaten to overwhelm you, hold on to the fact that God is in control. He is the solid rock on which you stand, and He will not let you be shaken. You can trust Him with your whole heart, knowing that He is faithful to keep His promises. In every trial, in every storm, God is with you. His love surrounds you, His strength empowers you, and His peace fills you. Trust Him, lean on Him, and know that He is carrying you through. You are not alone, God is by your side, and He will never let you go. No matter how difficult the journey may seem, remember that you are walking it with the one who knows the way, the one who is guiding your steps, and the one who will bring you safely to the other side. So, take heart. Be encouraged. You are not walking this path alone. The God who created the heavens and the earth is walking with you, holding you, and leading you toward his perfect plan for your life. Trust in his timing, rest in his promises, then find peace in his presence. He is with you now and always. Let us close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude even in the midst of our struggles. We acknowledge that you are sovereign and we trust in your perfect plan for our lives. Help us to hold on to you when the winds of life threaten to overwhelm us. Strengthen our faith, Lord, and let us find peace in your presence. We thank you for your promises and for the assurance that you are always with us. Guide us, protect us, and keep us ever close to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May you continue to trust in God through every season of life, and may his peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. As we wrap up this devotion, I want to encourage you to stay connected with us. If you found this message uplifting and encouraging, please subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll get more devotions like this one filled with God's word and practical insights to strengthen your faith delivered right to your feed. We also want to hear from you. Share your thoughts, reflections, and how God is working in your life in the comments below. Your experiences can inspire and encourage others on their own faith journey. Let's grow together in our trust and love for God. Thank you for being part of this community, and may God bless you richly as you continue to walk with Him.